Okay, I want to be candid with you all. This video is going to be a rant on men because I think there's a significant percentage of men who are treating women with absolute disregard for the emotional effects one can dump on another person when they actively are in the dating marketplace and these men are pursuing some casual connection, some casual companionship, some casual sex without any regard to the emotional effects. This might, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The emotional effects that it has on another human being when you get attached to another human being. And the sad thing is, is there's these men are being absolutely inconsiderate. They're being unconscientious. They're being very disrespectful to women. And I want to draw attention to these types of men so you don't find yourself in a trap falling for a guy who will eventually use you or play you. Now, here's the thing. A lot of men might watch this and say, we don't use women. Well, let's get real for a moment. It is rather dysfunctional in the dating marketplace today. Besides the fact that we treat it as a commodity with the dating apps and the swiping, how, how the fact is, is people are only chosen based on a the literal middle millisecond of swiping based on their looks. That's number one. And number two, there's really little investment made by people before they become physically intimate with another person. So there can be a lot of disingenuous people out there in the dating marketplace. And what I mean, be by what I mean by being disingenuous is people who aren't fully committed to the process of getting to know another human being for a full commitment. See, dating today is like shoe shopping. You go to a shoe store, you try on a couple shoes. These days it's actually worse. You walk out with those shoes, you don't even pay for it. You wear them out and then you bring them back to the shoe store and you're asking for a refund on something you didn't pay for. Well, that's the way dating is today for a lot of people. Now, this isn't for everyone, and most men are actually good people. The problem is most men are unaware of their childhood wounds and traumas that affects their capacity to actually lean into a healthy, happy relationship with someone. So I'm here to call this stuff out. And ladies, you have to be, I don't want to say be on guard because I don't want you to approach the dating process with walls up, with fear. What I want to encourage you to do is approach the dating process with an open mind, being understanding that a significant percentage of the of the midlife category of group of people are rather wounded from childhood wounds or adult traumas that have gone unhealed and it's incumbent upon you to first do your own work to heal from your wounds and traumas, but more importantly, vet to see if this person is even capable of a significant relationship. This is why I created my private coaching program. By the way, there's a link below to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. I'm here to say you have to be your own detective. And if you don't know the important questions to ask at the early stages of dating, you might find yourself attached to someone who's incapable of leaning into a healthy, happy relationship. So one of the things we have to address is the fact that with so many wounded people seeking that occasional companionship, occasional sex, occasional connection, that they're not capable for something different, uh, something deeper, excuse me. We have to recognize that this is the, the vast majority of singles out there. By the way, here in the United States, you realize that there's roughly about 120 million singles, people who are over 18 years old that are not in a marriage, okay? Now there might be, you know, there's a big percentage of those people that are probably in some sort of relationship with someone, but we are swimming in a sea of single people and the vast majority of them are rather dysfunctional. What I mean by dysfunctional is they have weak emotional maturity and weak relationship skills. And when people have weak emotional maturity and weak relationship skills, what happens is the early stage of dating is all the pheromones and the chemicals, you know, being released that makes you want to connect with someone and you're feeling thirsty for connection. 
Think of how many people during COVID were actually thirsty for connection and they wanted some sort of even cyber connection or some occasional uh, physical connection. And a lot of people were so lonely that they would accept whatever crumbs they got out, out of it. But now we're past that COVID period. You're in a position, if you're a woman that's smart, strong, successful, confident, all the attributes that make you someone desirable, then you have every right to do a better job vetting to see if this person is even capable of a significant relationship with you. And I'm here to say, and by the way, ladies, you're no picnic either. Let me be, be clear about this. There are plenty of you ladies that are avoidant attachment style, plenty of you ladies that are entitled, plenty of you ladies that act like a doormat. And being a doormat is not something that allows you to be a martyr in relationship. So there's plenty of people on both sides of the gender aisle that are incapable of leaning into a healthy, happy relationship. So how do we determine if we're getting used? Well, first, I want to avoid getting used from the very get-go by being more conscious and intentional in the early stages of dating. That's right, being conscious, conscious and intentional in the early stages of dating. What does that mean? It's don't date based on romance you know, as being the driving force of the relationship, I want to encourage you to be more intentional. What does that mean? Get really clear on the type of relationship that works for you. And that requires looking inward and looking at your life and saying, how would I fit someone into my life? Or how would I fit into someone else's life? Or more importantly, how can we blend two lives together? In addition, I'm here to encourage more honest and open communication to build deeper intimacy. What is intimacy? Intimacy is into me you see, into me you see. And I'm encouraging this because without intimacy, look at the days of being financially dependent upon a man for many of you isn't necessary. You're capable of taking care of yourself. So what do you want out of a relationship? I'm going to assume you want a greater emotional connection out of a relationship than just someone who's a provider and protector. Although we're going to talk about that in a moment. So with that said, if you're coming to the table capable of taking care of yourself, I'm going to assume that you want something deeper. So why do you accept men that give you crumbs? Because what I'm going to outline in a moment illustrates why many of you accept men who are not capable of a deeper type of relationship. So one way to determine if you're being used or played is he doesn't open up to you. He doesn't open up to you. He avoids personal questions. Now, in the beginning, we, we kind of give people a pass because we don't necessarily want to pressure them. But the reality is, is today we're meeting total strangers. You have every right to ask deeper questions in the early stages to determine if this person is a fit for you. And more importantly, if he's honest, is he sincere? And the only way you're going to do that is asking those questions. Again, I talk about that in my private coaching because we have to, those questions are unique to you. We have to base them on your personality. What questions do you want to uh, assess from this person? And if they're unable to open up personally, emotionally, are they really capable of a deeper relationship with you? Number two, he doesn't ask you about your desires after the hunt phase, after the, for ladies, I know you love the idea that men love the chase and men love the hunt and you can just sit back in your feminine energy and let him claim you. Just remember, what are men hunting? Men aren't hunting, I want to be in a relationship, they're hunting sex. So when in the beginning where they're in that hunt phase where they're doing all this, you know, asking about you, if all of a sudden after sex, that begins to wane and he's not really diving into your life, trying to find out about your relationship with your parents and your relationship with your children, your relationship with your professional capacity. He's no longer interested in that. It's very surface conversations. That could be a sign that you're going to get used or played by a guy. Okay. Number three, he doesn't protect you. See, it's not about physical protection. I think what me, the idea of provider protector, 
I think men need to have a greater responsibility emotionally protecting a person. You see, there's something I shared before in videos. I say men, women are the gatekeepers of sex and men are the gatekeepers of commitment. So when a man professes, I want a relationship, well, he's basically saying, uh, you know, the minute he says, I want a relationship. Now, he's not saying I want a relationship with you, but he's declaring that he wants to explore something greater than surface. Or is he? See, the word relationship is very vague for a lot of people. See, a relationship could be, I just want to use you at my beck and call. That's a relationship to me. Versus the men who want something serious, something that they want something deeper. They want to either move in with someone or get married. And protecting a woman is recognizing that a woman can get attached to a man after physical intimacy. See, woman, you know, women release a chemical uh, from their brain into their body known as oxytocin. And the minute there's physical intimacy, oh man, they bond with them. Men need to be aware of this. And you have to draw attention to this. And yet to be a true protector is to recognize that when they're seducing a woman or implying a desire to explore a relationship with them, when they turn around and say, I'm not ready for a relationship after they've been physically intimate with you, that's not genuinely protecting a woman. Now, let me just say this. There's a significant percentage of good men out there. There are. Now, a lot of you ladies don't choose those men, okay? You reject them on the dating sites. Just remember, you swipe left on a lot of great guys and you're swiping right on a lot of guys who will use you. That's what we see today in the dating marketplace. So just remember, there are good men out there. And yet, sadly, the vast majority of men and women out there are rather dysfunctional, as I outlined before. Number four, this is a good sign that you might be used or played by a guy, is he doesn't introduce you to his family or his friends. He doesn't introduce you to his family or his friends. Folks, if someone doesn't introduce you to his family or friends, that's a sign that he's not serious about wanting to commit to you in a relationship. Um, excuse me for a moment. I just got to write a message. So if someone doesn't introduce you into his life, if he doesn't try to integrate you into his life, that's a sign that all he wants out of you is time to himself with you, but he doesn't really want to integrate you into his life, okay? So if a guy isn't introducing you to his family and friends, that's a sign that you might be used or played later on down the road. Number five, he doesn't go out of his way to help you. You know, I remember I briefly dated a woman. At the time we began dating, she needed uh, help moving. And I'll be candid with you. I blew her off. Um, partially because I was ready to exit the relationship. Actually, no. Uh, yeah, this was right at the time I was ready to end the relationship. I'm not proud of what I did, but you know what? I made a commitment to help her and I didn't do that. If someone's not willing to actually invest in helping you uh, with parts of your life, then he's not a teammate and there's a good chance he may be using you. And last but not least, he doesn't, he puts off being exclusive. He avoids conversations about the future. Any guy, once you're physically intimate with a man and he's avoiding conversations about the future, that's a good sign that you're going to end up being used or played by this guy. And I'm here to say, we've got to stop giving guys a pass on this behavior. It is time to, at the top of your lungs, call men out on this bad behavior. Use your male friends to call men out on bad behavior. Now, again, I'm here to uh, profess, there are plenty of women out there that are equally bad. They're entitled. They have uh, emotionally distant. They have their own challenges. But we need to start calling out bad behavior because otherwise, this is going to beget more and more bad behavior. And I'm here, like I said, screaming at the top of my lungs, don't let guys get away with this. So just to repeat, he doesn't open up to you. He avoids personal questions. He doesn't ask you about your desires after the hunt phase. He doesn't protect you. And I don't mean physically protect you. I mean emotionally protect you. 
He doesn't go out of his way to help you, nor, and he puts off talking about being exclusive and he avoids conversations about a future. Any of those are a sign are of ways that men might be playing or using you. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating with you? Please let me know. If you have something to share, post a comment below. I'd like to hear about this. And if you like this content, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel.